What's up everybody? This is an Althea reaction to Venom The Last Dance and I have with your my friend Jacob Tankersley. What's uh, up y'all? I used to pronounce your last name. Tankersley. So Tankersley. <laughs> All right. Jacob Tankersley and we're going to give our initial thoughts on this movie and we won't be sp and we will be spilling the beans because there's nothing vague about yes. this movie. Jacob, what were your initial thoughts about this? Let's start with the good Let's start with the good out of the way first. What's good what, out of the way. What, what's the good what are we, what's the good parts about this movie? It was funny. It was funny. I thought it was good to see Tom Hardy in another movie. Um, but other than that, man, that was funny. <laughs> all right, all right. So I'll get my uh, uh, good thoughts out of the way. Uh, like you said, Tom Hardy, uh, yep. the dynamic that he has with himself, yep. because he does voice Venom. I did uh, think that so he does voice Venom. Like yes. themselves, like like that relationship. Actually, I thought he, that he was, was actually really interviewed good. the other day uh, by uh, one of the entertainment outlets. So, like, how do you do this? And he says he has an earpiece that he's listening to a recorded version of himself oh, wow. of how he does this uh, Venom acting. I thought I thought it was really interesting to actually like, to see the relationship between himself and Venom kind of evolve throughout the movie. Like that was pretty neat. And I think they did a really good job with that. That, that was kind of fun. So uh, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good part of the yeah. movie. So uh, the dynamic between Tom Hardy and Tom Hardy with Venom and Eddie Brock is always a plus with these uh, Venom movies. Uh, the hippie family in the in the movie, I honestly thought was like the nice like if this was like if you had like a random movie that wasn't Marvel related or comic book uh, movie related, it was just like a comedy with like this hippie family going to Area Fifty One, like. Honestly, that that'd be the funnier movie and the most more enjoyable movie to watch. What do you think about that? I think you could definitely have like an interesting spinoff or something with them. It was it was definitely interesting to see them. I didn't feel like they fit in. Like it was kind of weird that they were just, just the random. They're, they're just, just randomly, randomly in the movie, and they're there, and then they show up at the very end with the fight scene. It's like, oh, I didn't see this coming. But you could definitely see like it was a fun encounter, and it was kind of cool. Like his interaction with them looking for aliens, yeah. like that whole him being an alien. It was kind of neat, but yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's the positives. Now. The negatives right off the bat, and I was I was like literally saying this out loud in the theater, and Jacob can attest to this. Yeah. I was I said out loud, I am about to like this movie is having me want to me to walk out of this movie right now. The way I mean, first off, the beginning of the movie, after they do an exposition on Noel, which is visually really cool looking yeah, with crazy. with Noel. Visually, Noel looks really good. That's all you can say because uh, one of the negatives. Well, I'll touch on Noel in a minute. But after that exposition with Noel, they show a recreation of that post credit scene from No Way Home with Venom at the Mexican bar in the MCU. Here's the thing they do. They actually do it. I didn't think they would do it because they show it in the trailer with the vial with that little piece of symbiote in the trailer. They show that and I said, you know what? Morbius did this with the Spider-Man mural behind Morbius in the trailer. They never showed that in the movie. They actually retconned this. They not only retconned that, they actually redid the whole thing of like how he got teleported or transported back to his Marvel Cinematic Universe. The one thing I cannot stand about this is that one, it lacks consistency. You need to know, <laughs> know your own continuity because in Morbius, you show Vulture being pulled into this universe the same way that we saw Venom leave the MCU in No Way Home. And in this war and in this movie, it just shows them being like pulled through a Sonic the Hedgehog ring, essentially. Yeah. That's essentially what it was. So that right there really irked me. And then they show how he leaves that little piece of symbiote in his universe, not in the 616 No Way Home Marvel universe, which is what we are shown. Yeah. So I don't know if this is, so again, this is just another line of Sony, Avi Arad, Matt Tolmac, like producers just being Gobby, like Gobby Gook. I I don't know what to say, but like, what were your thoughts about the first part of the movie? It was a letdown. It was, it was definitely a letdown because like you had this whole thing. It's like, wait, hold up. He was in the universe and now he's back. But we like, but we already knew that. Yeah, but like we as coming fans, into the I movie, just felt like we expected to see a little bit more about that, like a little bit more explanation. You had like a whole world of opportunity to like acknowledge that he was there but then they just squashed it moved on to the next the thing. funny line that venom did say is like i'm sick of this multiverse crap that was funny <laughs> like that was again it, like again the whole that was the movie like the only reason if you're gonna go watch the movie 
I, if you if you enjoy the Eddie Brock Venom relationship, that's the only reason to watch the movie. That was good. That's what I was watching the whole time. I wasn't watching the plot, the other symbiotes, all like null. I was watching the relationship between him and Venom. Yeah, it just didn't. It didn't. I had, had, had a lot of opportunities with the MCU and just didn't capitalize on any of them. So another negative I will point to is logic in this movie makes zero sense whatsoever. Someone gets struck by lightning and li now I actually looked this up like in real time in the movie theater that apparently you can survive a lightning strike, but visually watching that, also, it, it t it's like really this person survived a lightning was, it, strike. And it was like there was no introduction to this character either. It was just like you're seeing this person, she's dreaming, and it's a flashback to her brother who gets struck by lightning, and she's holding his hand, and that's how she has the scars. Like, she gets struck like, first. And then it goes right, into it him. it goes through yeah. her and to him. But still, it's like, it felt like a slap in the face of the fan. It's like, here's this, like, one-minute character development, who this person is, and then now she's, like, an important person in the movie. I'm exactly. like, what the heck is going on? Like, this is how you're going to enter some weird random lightning strike on a beach where also there was nobody else, no, no other houses. It looked like they were in a whole other world. It didn't even look like they put effort into, like, developing they just slapped person. it in there yeah like, they were like here it is here's the thing this is all you need to know about her and second main like you know almost main character of the movie i just all right another another thing that is a negative for me the whole point of this movie is for null to get free from his prison that the symbiotes have entrapped him in since the beginning of time and this involves a codex that involves eddie and venom now this is the second comic book movie in my lifetime where a villain is going after a codex hence man of steel with zod going after clark and trying to get the codex from him so that's on the back of my mind totally unrelated but like that's still in the back of my mind it's like really we're gonna have another villain codex. going after a codex per se in this movie name so yeah get like keys. find like find something else to name it but no i think they say they're setting him up for a potential big crossover. Now, going into this movie, I have told you a rumor that this movie was supposedly Venom. Again, I told you this was a rumor. Sure. That this movie was supposedly, a, again, specify this enough, a rumor. And yes, it is a rumor. It is not true that Venom will somehow, through some plot device, get back into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and then leave behind him a dying destroyed universe that when with null following him and thus sets up a spider-man 4 we have it probably dubbed spider-man king in black or that's a subplot in secret wars per se that never happens at all and venom dies at the dies at the end of the movie and then the post credit scene again visually for me it's cool because i'm a big spider-man fan of these characters but the post credit scene makes zero sense when he says like I like your champion has fallen. I will come and burn your world. First off, how with the codex yeah, now no, gone? And two, trapped. and if you if you do get free, who in this Marvel Sony universe is going to stop this god of symbiotes who his henchmen uh, like hench creatures just, just lay waste with all the symbiotes essentially? Craven the Hunter is all that's left in this like in terms of the movie lineup there's nothing else left in this universe and this you know what you know what that's just popped my head the last dance feels like aquaman 2 it feels like a whole bunch of plot points yep. like thrown up against a canvas like throw spaghetti up against the wall and see what sticks yeah. that's this is what it feels like it feels like a buddy buddy comedy movie it feels like a road trip movie yep. it feels like a bad sci-fi movie it's, not, it's, it's not all a, over the place it's not a universe it's not um it's not anything to like add on to like what all is going on it's just something to like sit down and watch and think it's funny that the guy's talking to himself and move on like it, it doesn't make any sense in terms of continuity or anything no it doesn't continuity shmanuity is the going at sony so final and we'll and we'll just leave it at that i mean, again like is it better than have you seen Madden Web? Bro, I couldn't even get all the way through it. So would you watch this over Madden Web? Yeah, just because I like Tom Hardy. But would, would you watch this over Morbius? Ah, oh, dude, I'm not even like... 
I probably just wouldn't watch a movie. Like if I had to pick between Morbius. <laughs> if, you, if you had to, if you yeah, had to again, be strapped down to a chair, I think I'd, I think I'd, I think I'd watch it over Morbius again, just because of Tom Hardy and the relationship between him and Venom. Like that was good. That yes. was good. Like you could like. MC, like you could go make a TV series that is solely just like them just Brock talking to each and, other. Yeah, Brock and Venom the whole time. Like that's the movie is their relationship. It's not let's save the world, let's do whatever. It's just like the mishaps of whatever, and it's almost like a comedy. You could do that. That's why I would watch it. But that's one of the reasons why a lot of folks might prefer the first Venom movie over the second one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So for me. I would watch this over Madden Web any day of the week, any day of the week. And unlike my friend here, I, I suffered through that with my father. So he suffered, I I he suffered I, that I with me. Keep, man. I saw Spider-Man crawling, crawling, crawling across the roof and I was like, nope, I'm done. I, sorry. <laughs> want to be Spider-Man. Yeah, I want to be Spider-Man. Yeah. And then I would, de it would be a coin flip for me for Morbius for me. It would be a coin flip. Morbius was so bad. With, uh, the first half of Morbius is Morbius like the first so quarter of Morbius is interesting. Morbius was so bad. It is bad. Morbius is so bad. Oh, one other thing I have to get out of my system. What is it with Venom and related dance, cringeworthy dances? Yeah, there is a dance so sequence well. in this movie Which that involves like Venom, and this goes in line with not only the uh, Tobey Maguire dancing in yeah. Spider Man 3. Then you have uh, in Morbius, yeah. uh, Matt Smith's uh, character doing a dance sequence. And then you have now in Venom 3, Venom himself it's doing a dance. A Avi Arad, the producer of this movie and the producer of those previous two movies, stop doing that idea. It's not funny. <laughs> Just stop. It's one of those things where it's like, why? Yeah. For why? Why? It's so dumb. I don't know. I, maybe it's a thing. It's like it must be his thing. Apparently, all of these movies now. I, it was weird, and now I'm also kind of confused. Did they name the movie Last Dance, and then they're like, "Ooh, we're gonna do this," or did they have this scene <sighs> and yes. then name the movie Last Dance? Oh my Dance? goodness! Super cringy. It has really multiple weird. meanings now. Yes, the yeah. title now has multiple meanings. It doesn't make sense. It's like, wait, why was it actually called Last Dance? Because there was nothing in there that had to do with anything about the title except that cringe, cringy dance. And this is supposedly the last Venom movie. Right. Which, uh, breaking news, if you didn't know already, they announced a month or so ago that Seth Rogen, who was involved with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles anime yeah. movie, has been brought on to helm a new Venom franchise, animated and rated R. So the Venom franchise franchise is not dead, but this current one may it's be. So we're not done with Venom yet. So we're either going to get it with like Seth or we're going to get the MCU iteration in Secret War somehow. It's unfortunate. Tom Hardy in the MCU would have been, that would have been interesting. Not as a main person, but maybe like a side, you know. He still probably could be. Like a very, like that universe is variants guess, of yeah, Eddie Brock. I guess Eddie Brock could be. Yeah. But we'll what see. we saw, but with recently with Marvel Spider-Man 2 the video game, it showed and proved you can do a comic accurate Venom without Eddie Brock per se, yeah. as long as you have that connection between Peter Parker and the symbiote and then having a fallout and then whoever the fall guy is that eventually gets a symbiote, then you see that classic Venom versus Spider-Man thing which we have been waiting for done right. Yep. And Spider-Man 4 is supposed to kick off production uh, next, this upcoming summer, they announced with Tom Holland and company. That movie was rumored to be featuring Venom. No, could they do a cross, could they do a cross between that and uh, the rumored Kingpin and Daredevil storyline they want to do after the new uh, the Daredevil show? Possibly, but with the rumored dates be in between uh, Doomsday and Secret Wars with Spider-Man 4. I mean, that's that's a, a toss ball. But before we get a tangent on that, we're going to close it out here uh, with the score. And we and we have a movie score called Don't Bother Buying Popcorn. Get a small pop. You can get a small popcorn, a really medi a nice medium, or break out the large with extra butter. Between those four categories, which would you choose? And you actually had a bag of uh, yeah, I did have, you had some, a bag I was of hungry. Reese's. I, yes. I'll, I'll put it that I was hungry. So, so what, out of those four ratings, what, what would you man, do? Man, I would, I'd say maybe a small. 
I'd say get a small popcorn, like something to just kind of snack on. Like nothing. I, I would say get something before you come to the movie and don't bother <laughs> spending the money on popcorn. Do not bother spending money on the popcorn. Get, have a nice pizza, make a nice pizza at home or grab Chick-fil-A or whatever your preferred fast food restaurant is. Get that first before you go into the theater. And this is Jacob Tankersley and I'm Joshua Mickle and keep kicking it to the king.